Yes, hello, my eco friends. Uh, we are starting very soon. So my name is Christian Zasse, Zasse Photo. And today we have an interesting guest. It's a topic that is really important. We haven't tackled it. It is about deforestation, clear cutting and so on. We're going to go back to Reading, where we have been a few times already. So uh, just before you start, I would like to uh, welcome you all. It's Friday again. Wonderful to have you. Uh, I'm going to show you a small introductory video to give, give you a bit of feeling of what all this, uh, this discussion is going to be uh, about. And then we're going to jump to our guest. So just watch it and we'll be live very soon. Thank you. I'm going to mute my microphone now. that every form of life in the world shares is that we are all dependent on at least one watershed. Battle Creek is just one watershed in the world, but what is happening to it is happening to watersheds throughout California, states, and other countries. Battle Creek Alliance is a grassroots group of rural residents in the foothills of Mount Lassen in Northern California. We joined together after massive clear-cutting began decimating the area. Between 1998 and 2012, the industrial timberland was clear-cut at a fast clip. Then, in 2012, a 28,000-acre fire burned most of what was left. The land was subsequently further destroyed by salvage logging. The regulatory agencies and timber industry insist there are no significant effects from what they are doing. Forests are more than just a collection of trees to take for short-term profit and disposable products. They are the support community for the water we drink, for pollinators, for climate, for wildlife, and for the air we breathe. The sterile tree farms that follow clear-cutting and salvage logging do not replace diverse forests. The U.S. is 5% of the world's population, but we use a high percentage of the world's trees. Face reality. We are all connected. Choose to protect. The one thing that every form of life in the world shares is that we are all Okay, I don't know if you can hear me now. I'm just going to wait because... Um, I think there. Oh, you can. Very good. Okay, thanks. Well, we we have some we have some issues here. I think it's it's not to do with on my side. It seems to be something uh, something on the restream side, which I'm, I apologize for. Uh, yeah, I can see. So I seem to be back live now. <laughs> oh, this is so frustrating. I'm so sorry to to uh, keep you waiting, but there's absolutely nothing I can do. What I'm trying to do at the moment is I'm trying to connect again to 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 Merrily, but I just wanted to. Um, to ask you to please be a little bit more patient. At least it's working directly now. Uh, it it seems it seems to be okay. Um, it may also be my internet. I just don't know at the moment what the what the uh, what the problem is. Okay, so I'm only at the moment streaming through YouTube. So thanks for your patience. Now the problem I have is um, I cannot uh, I cannot at the moment connect to Merrily for some reason. So I just have to see why that's not working. 
but you know how it is when you go live <laughs> everything can happen it's you know um put it this way <laughs> you have patience thank you very much i see susan north i see glenn hazel woody Jackie Porty, Maxine, thank you for the donation. Karen, Osprey, Mama, everybody was so patient. You know, this is an incredibly interesting topic. If I cannot go get this going uh, today, I promise to you, we will we will do this again. Okay, we will do this again. This is a great topic. It's a very interesting topic, and um, I just uh, the problem is is as you know when you do live shows. Although I have a very a very good equipment, there's still things that can go wrong, and they're out of my control. Um, I do prepare this for hours, so just that you know, <laughs> I do prepare for hours, I really do, to make sure everything works, but um, it, this happened in the last five minutes. So uh, let's see, what I, need to, <laughs> what I need to figure out is how to get Merrily back online. If I do, then we'll go ahead. So I'm just going to, oh, Nicole, Nicole, can you do me a favor, please, uh, if you hear me, can you call Merrily and just ask her wait a second um we see you and we hear you okay that's good so merrily just says they she sees and hears me but i cannot um i cannot connect um so that's fine but i cannot see them and i don't know why um i don't know why i i, I cannot see your your live stream um okay if you can hear me, um, Mauro, could you please do me a favor? Disconnect. Should I try closing the browser? Yes, cl close and restart the browser, please. Uh, that's the only way. Thank you, Pascal, for being so patient and, and uh, donating some, some, some money. I really appreciate that. Uh, gosh, now, how is it possible? Oh, yeah, they are, re they are reconnecting now. One second, they are reconnecting. So I'm just going to put something better in the background, something nice that Nicole has done. I know, Nicole, you're also sending messages. What, I'm, uh, what am I calling to ask? Don't worry, Nicole, I'm, I'm confusing you. I, I, I apologize because I just got a message here from... Um, uh, here they go, here they go. Let's hope this time it'll work. Yes, we got them, we got them. Ha, <laughs> fantastic. We got it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, everyone, we are back. <laughs> we are back. There, there, um, I think there was a glitch in our system and the glitch came through via, uh, via Restream. It's not uh, probably not on my side. I apologize, but this was out of my hands. I'm fully excited. Thank you so much for sticking with me. <laughs> and now I'm going to try and get... I'm just going to clean up my board a bit here. Just hang on one sec. Um, and then we'll get you back on screen. And then we'll get going. So that's fine. So Merrily, here you are. Add. We'll happily add you now. I'm going to get my face out of the way. We had it nicer before, but this is much, much better. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, this is Merrily Woodhouse. Welcome, Merrily Woodhouse, after some ordeals that we have here but that's that's life right so anyway Marilee it's wonderful to have you on the show and thank you everyone for for patiently staying with us it's really great ah, I see Kit Harvey is also there Kit is welcome to Northern California so let's jump right in Marilee just give us a little bit of background about the area you are and in the meantime I'm going to pull up uh, pull out some maps to explain but just explain a little bit about yourself thank you go ahead well, I'm Marilee Woodhouse, and I'm the director of Battle Creek Alliance and Defiance Canyon Raptor Rescue. Um, we've been working on these issues for about over 10 years now. We formed a small grassroots group to work on the issues, and the person that's helping me here with the technology is Maro, who is my activist partner, and we've been working on this for a very long time now. Okay, very good. Well, let's try. I'm just going to... Um, one second, I just have to do this all live. I'm going to um, make it so that you are also on the screen at the same time. So just give me a second uh, to adjust, do all these adjustments live. We're going to shrink you and put you in a corner so that people can see you. And then you can also have, uh, you know, you can also see the, uh, uh, the, the screen live. So here we go. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is uh, Redding, California that we're looking at. And this is, uh, as I understand, Shasta County. Is that right, uh, Merrily? Yeah, the, the red border is Shasta County. That is Shasta County. So, I mean, Redding has been on the map 
for rather unfortunate reasons. So I'm going to go over and uh, um, on another map. Uh, it's a pity we don't have Jamie Harvey here. He's an incredible firefighter. He is the um, uh, the uh, the well. What, 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 now I'm going to the. Um, Kit and, and uh, Jamie are uh, related anyway. I forgot what it was now. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit flustered now. <laughs> but anyway, we're looking, at the, we're looking here at the map. Uh, and can you explain to us, in August, we had these terrible fires in Reading. Can you just tell us what happened there and wh where, what we're looking at? Well, there were fires that the original fire was started by somebody's RV um, somehow starting the, the, the fire near Whiskey Town Lake, which is kind of where those little red bubbles are. And it started and it just went crazy because it was really hot, of course. I mean, Reading is always hot, but it's even hotter than it used to be for more consistent lengths of time. And then we get less water than we used to, too, from rainfall. But so it just took off and there was no controlling it. It became just an incredible fire NATO, they called it. And... It, nobody's ever seen anything like that before. And then that fire burned to the west of town, and then two more fires started to the north of Reading and were in areas that had been clear-cut a lot in the not-too-distant past, and that was true of many areas. But a lot of the western area of town was just foothill pine, what we call foothill gray pine and, um, and oak trees, and that just took off and was unstoppable also. Yes, by the way, now I got, I got it again. So Kit is the cousin of Jamie. That's how it is. She's the cousin of, of Jamie, and he's the firefighter uh, um, who's a good friend of ours, just like J uh, uh, Kit is. And, and so we heard this. So they actually know the cause of the fire. And so let's jump now um, to Battle Creek. And so we're now looking uh, sort of southeast of Reading. And you are actually in... Uh, where is your place? Let me just see it. Uh, there, there you are. There's, there's Manton. There's Manton. Uh -huh. and, and I think this, as you explained to me, uh, that is close to the Sacramento River. And that is a creek that we're looking at. And there has been, that is the movie that we were looking at initially. And this has been clear cut since the early 90s, have, has lost a lot of force through, through clear cutting. And this is what we're going to discuss today. So, uh, so uh, how often are you there? Can you tell us a little bit about the area experiences? And I will uh, later also. I'm going to show a little bit more about the movies that you are. And also, uh, Marily, uh, just explain a little bit about the involvement that you have with raptors, because all this is one ecological system. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Right. Well. Battle Creek Watershed is where I've lived for 30 years now. I'm actually a fifth generation Californian, but I've lived up here in the very northern part of the state for 30 years. And Battle Creek Watershed, when I moved there, had not started being clear cut yet. And once I had been there for a while is when the clear cutting began and it started changing the area really strongly. Battle Creek is one of the largest tributaries of the Sacramento River and the Sacramento River is the watershed that supplies about 60% of the water for the whole state. And Battle Creek is also one of the last cre uh, creeks that supports wild-run salmon, native Chinook salmon. And so it's been the site of a really large salmon restoration project since the late 90s. It was supposed to, the restoration project was supposed to take 10 years, but it's still not completed now. And I think it's at over, at 100, over $100 million that they've spent at this point. But most of the fish in the creek now are, are um, raised at the hatchery. There aren't very many of the wild ones left. They're on the threatened list for federal. Right, and, and, and your involvement with raptors? Well, that began about five, six years ago when I had never heard of raptor rehabilitation or, or wildlife rehabilitation, probably mostly because there's not a lot of money in it, and so it's not like a well-known kind of career to have. But I learned about it sort of inadvertently when I found a little pygmy owl at my place one time, just standing on the back porch. And that was how I learned. I went to a local rehabber and learned there. And then I got my own permits to do just raptors because I really love the raptors. They're, they're really interesting. Right, right. Okay, very good. Uh, so we know a little bit of, of the area. Let's talk a bit about clear cutting or deforestation in general because that's 
uh, that's really the big um, topic. Now, I found something really interesting. I'm just going to uh, show this now. Um, one second, let me just blend this out like that. There we go. Now we can, now we can see what we're looking at. Uh, we're, we're still in the United States now. We're going to go to the East Coast. And I just found an interesting brochure here from Connecticut, um, uh, from New England. Uh, and um, uh, 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 yeah. And what's interesting here is they actually talk about the advantages of clear cut uh, for wildlife and forest health. So what you see on the top left here is a picture of a recent clear cut, and then you can see one year later, um, you know the, uh, the, uh, the 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 new wood is coming through, and then ten years later it looks like that, and then the brochure describes all the, um, you know, the, the advantages, you can see songbirds here and so on. So if I were to read this uh, here, and this is, uh, this is actually uh, published here by the Connecticut Department of Energy, I would say, oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Uh, so clear cutting is good. So, so what's going on here, uh, Merrily? Well, I'm not familiar with that part of the country, being it's far away on the other side of the country, but their weather is very different than ours here. In California, we're in Mediterranean climate where we get a lot less rain and we have very hot, dry summers. So it's a whole other world. And I can assure you that our clear cuts don't look anything like that even 10 years later. Right. So what, what are the dangers uh, that, uh, that you have with uh, clear cutting? I mean, it's been uh, very popular. Uh, why, why, do, uh, you know, why do we see clear cutting? What are the interest groups? What are the conflicts? Uh, that you have, especially in your area? Well, the timber industry makes a lot more money off clear cutting than it does anything else. It's a lot faster. They can use smaller crews of people to do it because they're just mowing down the whole forest. And it just, you know, it, it's beneficial to the people at the top, basically. Um, for wildlife or any kind of plant diversity, it has no benefits whatsoever here. Okay. Um, okay, fine. So it has it has it has no benefits. So why has there? Why are you so particularly interested in this area, not other areas? What what is it about this part of of um, Northern California that you find is so so valuable to protect? Because you live there, or what is the reason? Well, partially, yeah. I mean, you're always going to know more about the place. Well, you should know more about the place you live in. But um, California, the Sierra Nevada mountain range is really important for diversity. California, on a whole, on the whole, has more diversity than some whole countries do. And the Sierra Nevada is a really important part of that. And we're the very northern tip of the Sierra Nevada going into the southern Cascades here. And so it's just, it's extremely important to protect it for the future and for the present as well because the fewer trees you have the hotter it gets the drier it gets there's the whole the whole weather system is influenced by the amount of forest cover you have and when you take away that mature forest cover and replace it with little tiny trees that are six inches tall that aren't going to be big for you know 80 to 100 years you're changing the entire climate of the area and there's theories about you know, forcing of, of from top down or bottom up, which means that the, you know, from the lower part of a system can have climate impacts on the whole world, just the way that the whole world can have impacts on the local. So, you know, by changing this amount of forest cover in a relatively short time, you know, like 20 years, it's, it's hugely important to the world at large. Right. Right. Yeah, that 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 makes sense. Um, I mean, you you do have also. I mean, for for those of you who are interested, I've I've just found something here also from National Geographic. I'm just going to blend this in. Uh, let's see. Here we go. So National Geographic is also very concerned in general about deforestation, which is of course the more generic term, and clear cutting is part of deforestation. There are many there 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 are many different uh, reasons why people do clear cutting. So clear cutting is something you experience in your area. If you go more to the Amazon in, into, into Brazil, then uh, the, the reason there would be that this, the soil is less fertile and thereby uh, burning down uh, you know, the carbon and adding uh, nitrogen to the soil makes it more productive for the local farmers, which of course is short-term thinking. But there are many different 
uh, reasons for 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 de deforta deforestation. Most of them, of course, are economically driven. Um, we we uh, do you uh, can you comment maybe a little bit on the on the global impact of of clear cutting or deforestation? Well, the deforestation that's been occurring in the Amazon for a long time, a high percentage of that is to make more grazing land for cattle to grow more meat for America. A lot of, a lot of the meat that's grown in that area where it has been deforested, is, it comes to America for McDonald's and places like that. Right, Merrily, could uh, there? I'm, I'm just getting some uh, some some uh, message here from from Jenny. Could you maybe speak up a little bit more? They, uh, they, uh, probably the volume on your side is not uh, high enough at the moment. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Or or ask maybe Mauro just to put it up a little bit, so we get. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So I think it's uh, the audio's uh, maybe not coming through because I would really like everyone to be able to hear what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll speak louder to you. I tend to be kind of soft-spoken. It's the yes. thing with words. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Very good. Well, anyway, um, I, I just want to open the um, you know the floor to all our viewers. Thank you for staying online. It's really kind of you. And sorry again, my apologies for the you know for the glitches, which I, I really couldn't help. I have to. I'm going to change something for next Friday because I think the service that I was using wasn't reliable for restream as I thought it was, it just didn't work. So uh, anyway, uh, that's enough said of that. I just uh, want to uh, get the uh, files quickly ready so uh, and, and show some of the uh, footage that Merrily has. Uh, in the meantime, just send in your questions. I mean, do you have any deforestation or clear cutting in your area? I've just seen Nicole put in comments and so on. Uh, so, so please bring in your questions. I mean, there are a lot of uh, environmental questions that are, uh, you know, that can, that can be asked uh, here. I mean, starting with your own neighborhood. I mean, the very house that you're probably sitting in, or or the apartment, or wherever you you are, is probably uh, a result of deforestation or clear cutting, and it's something that we are uh, driven with. We, have, of course, all have economical uh, reasons. I mean, you see it every morning when you go out; everybody rushes to their work. And we're all trying to keep the economy driving. So, I mean, this is quite a difficult topic. It's not as easy to say, well, we're going to stop all clear cutting. We're going to stop all these things. Uh, maybe, Merrily, what is your view on this? Surely you've thought about this. Well, you know, one of the things that I always look at is how many empty buildings there are. I know in the Reading area, there are just an amazing amount of especially commercial buildings that are empty. And then, you know, Costco comes along and builds a whole new building somewhere else and leaves the old building empty. And, there's just an amazing amount of, of empty stores and offices. And so every time you do that, it's just an, a complete waste of materials. And that happens. I know that, you know, urban blight basically is happening all over the country. And that's something to be aware of. We can't keep doing that. We can't keep just throwing things away after they're hardly used and starting over and using more new stuff because there's a, there's a limit to the new stuff we can use. Right, right. I mean... Um... Uh, so, so in in uh, currently, how would you actually see? I mean, I know I know Canada quite well, but the United States as such and their efforts. How would you see that on, in a world perspective? Which do you, which countries do you think are the most exemplary uh, at the moment regarding uh, you, you know the the general ecology and the awareness? Uh, do you think the United States is in the forefront at the moment? No, not at all. Um, the United States, the last I looked at the numbers, is about 5% of the world's population. And we use about 30, between 25 and 30% of most of the resources, including timber, but water, energy, everything. We use a really high percentage compared to most of the rest of the world. And I think we're second. I, we're behind China on some of the usages, but China has a lot more people than we do, too. So, you know, person for person. We are very wasteful of natural resources, and that was fine when there weren't as many people as there are now. And now that there are so many people, though, we can't keep going like this. And that's one thing I don't see in the public dialogue pretty much anywhere, is talking about that we can't keep using as much as we are. 
And and that's interesting. Let's talk a bit about the United States. So you're obviously in California, and California has always been the well, at least from my understanding, together with Washington, Oregon, uh, you know, California, more the, the the green states, maybe where where the awareness is more, which I I would uh, equate also with British Columbia. Um, on a, uh, how does California as such compare with the rest of the states? Which which uh, states would you say are more um, uh, well, would you call it green or more conscious of the environment and are prepared to do more to sustain the future for the next generations? And where do you think more needs to be done? Well, it's funny because California has been being touted as being a leader in, in climate change type things, and yet it allows all this deforestation. And it's really turning a blind eye to what is one of the leading causes of climate change. And it you know, that's one of the things you have to look below the words. That's that's what I've spent my time learning in the past 10 years is that what what the words say on the surface, whether it's from industrial timber or from the regulatory agencies, you can't just go by those. You have to look at what's actually happening on the land because the land doesn't lie, but the people do. Right. So, um, well, what do you actually recommend? Well, I mean, uh, what is what? So, what is the way forward? I know you're quite active in this. So, do you, you do you have a battle plan? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wish I had a really major battle plan, but that would require probably a lot more money than small grassroots groups have. <laughs> but really, you know, I I just work on the individual timber harvest plan level in my area because that's what I can do. We our group has been collecting water quality data for the past 10 years. And we had um, recently, we had a published paper about our water data, which shows the effects of all the, both the clear cutting and the, the post fire salvage logging, because that's something that happened in the Battle Creek watershed is once it had been clear cut for a, a lot of acres, and then a big fire happened too and burnt it. And then they could salvage log, which has even less rules and regulations than the clear cutting does and so now there's just these masses of sort of desert land which they have replanted in some places with only ponderosa pines so then all the diversity is gone as well as everything else but anyway um the point is is that it, there are no easy answers for this especially with climate change happening but the main thing to do is to stop using so much and to stop cutting so much Right. So you talked about uh, clear cutting. I think everybody um, should uh, it, it should be clear what you mean by it. There's another uh, word in the title which you call wa the, 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 the watersheds. Can you explain a little bit about those and what, the, what your role is in that? Um, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Okay, one second. I'm just going to go to the title here. So uh, the, the title of the talk is Clear Cutting Forests and Watersheds during climate change, seriously. So what are what are watersheds? Maybe people may not know what watersheds are. Well, a watershed is defined usually by the largest ridges that create a drainage so that all the different small tributaries of a large water body drain to that large water body and that water body drains out to the ocean eventually. So in this case, Battle Creek drains to the Sacramento and the Sacramento River drains out to the ocean. And so it's always, whenever you look at a watershed, I mean, you can call them different watersheds because they are, you know, separated by the big ridges and things like that. But really, it's all one giant watershed because it all goes to the ocean eventually. That's one thing that I always look at in nature, no matter what kind of nature work I'm doing, is that everything's connected. You know, there's no there's no separating that. We, we people love to make little borders and say, oh, this is here and that's over there and things like that. But the fact is, is that it all works together. And as the parts stop working together, we start getting into big trouble like we are now. Right, right. OK, so I got I have a question from Jackie Porter already. But Jackie, before we jump into this, so please keep on pouring in your questions. I'm just going to go and show uh, uh, a slideshow here. Maybe, um, Marilee, can you just comment on it and then I will go through, through the um, slideshow. One yeah, second. this is about our raptor rescue work, which is an important aspect of our work also. And so we rescue eagles, hawks, and owls, and falcons from around um, seven, or six counties in Northern California. It covers hundreds of thousands of square miles. And then Battle Creek Alliance, we formed in 2007 to work on the watershed issues. Okay, what does three mean? <laughs> 
community. <laughs> so every form of life, it doesn't matter if it's us or the littlest bug in the world or whatever, every form of life needs three things. Do you know what those three things are? Do you know what these three things are? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, and actually, this is really blurry, but I know what they are already. So, you know, everybody needs food, water, and usable habitat. Every, you know, I mean, we, we always want a lot of other things. We want our technology, we want our car, we want all those things, but food, water, and habitat are the things that we cannot live without. And those are the things that we're threatening by the way we're living. Well, what about the air we breathe? Well, yeah, the, the air is kind of <laughs> part of the habitat. <laughs> right, that's what I always think. <laughs> all I need is the air that I breathe. <laughs> Sorry, that song was going through my head. <laughs> 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 Song, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> well, and so, you know, if you if you live in a forest community, you're you're usually going to have clear cutting around you, especially in California. I don't know about everywhere else, but in California, if you live near a forest, there's there's a lot of holes out there even if you haven't seen them. Okay, next one. Oh, this is the area, right? Yeah, and that's the Battle Creek watershed where I live. Um, the big snowy peak to the right-hand side there is Mount Lassen. Part of beautiful, Lassen. beautiful. Yeah, that's all national forest, and you can see how there's no clear-cutting in the national forest land, and then it starts on the private industrial timberland. And all those little brown holes are an average size of 20-acre clear-cuts, and a 20 acres is about the size of four city blocks, if you can kind of visualize that. And Battle Creek Watershed has had about approximately 30,000 acres of clear cuts in the industrial timberland. And, and then that big brown loop shape there, you see where, I, where I'm talking about? It kind of looks like... Yes. Yeah, that always looks like Italy. That's the Ponderosa fire from 2012. Wow, wow. Yeah. Susanville, it says, Susanville area. Yeah, that is to the east of us. Actually, I think you have the older version of the PowerPoint. I sent a, a younger one. But oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I, was, I was doing a presentation in Susanville, and that area has a lot of clear-cutting also. You can see all the little brown holes there. Okay. Well, this we've seen all too often. Yeah, and, and you can see how much um, what's called slash, which is leftover branches and things like that are left behind and then you can see clear cuts a little ways away and then far in the back as well. I mean you were talking which was very interesting I mean we showed Connecticut before and they seem to have a very fast regeneration there how long would it take for this clear cut area that we are seeing there in the distance or um, must, uh, I'm just trying to get us back again one second I, I have no idea why it's so bad. Yeah, there we are. We're back again. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, sorry. Uh, we were just out for a second. So uh, we, we are back now. Yeah, we were buffering. I know, I know. I apologize. I think it's it's clear that it's on my side, the internet, which shouldn't be. Yes, Kit, we are back. Yes. So sorry, let's repeat this again. So what, uh, what we were looking at, I'm sorry, is the clear uh, uh, cuts up close and uh, my question to Marilee was, how long would it take for a, uh, um, an area like this to to be covered again? How long would the regeneration uh, take? Um, in this area, it takes a very long time. That that was cut in 2008, and it still doesn't look a whole bunch different. Uh, it does have some trees replanted, but they are not doing all that well. So you're talking about 50 to 100 years. Would that be about right or longer? Yeah, I mean, most of the trees that are being cut in these clear-cut areas are 80 to 100 years old, and they're actually what's called second growth, because the original growth that was here when the white settlers came in the late 1800s was all cut by the early 1900s. So this is the second growth that had grown up in, in that time, and now that's cut too. And another issue that nobody really talks about is that the soil becomes poorer each time too, because soil takes an amazingly long time to form and become en enriched basically by the forest around it. And so if you're coming back and cutting this soon, it's the soil is getting poorer. So the third, this, what is th the third rotation now is not gonna do very well over the time. Right, 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 okay. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Yes, and those are actually the same places. The, the top picture is where they did the original clear cut. 
And then the bottom picture is after it burned, and you can still see the clear cut in, in that one side. And then the area to the left of that was salvage logged, all that brown area. And then the green area at the top was actually owned by the state. And that part was not completely logged down to bare dirt, and it also wasn't herbicided. That's another thing that industrial timber does is it uses a lot of herbicides. Okay, and here's the CAL FIRE logging data. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and Shasta County is at the top there, and you can see that it's been about half cut in 20 years. Right. Loss of habitat and habitat fragmentation are the main drivers of wildlife population declines. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's awful. So. Yep. And yeah. This okay. About our raptor rescue work, which this is why, you know, as there's more population, that means that there are more cars being driven around and more habitat being broken up for houses and roads and all those things, as well as deforestation. And so more, more animals get hit. We, the majority of the birds we see are hit by cars. And that gold, that's a golden eagle on, on the left who didn't survive. She was hit. And the bald eagle on the right was also hit by a car, and we thought that one was going to make it. We took it down to the UC Davis Raptor Center in the Veterinary Hospital, and they thought that she was going to be able to survive, but then she ended up dying anyway because she had several fractures in her pelvic area. Right. So how many bald eagles do you find in a year? You know, this year so far I've gotten eight. And well, eight, one was a golden eagle, but yeah, this, this is a higher year than the year before, the year before we had six, but this year too, we had the two eaglets from the reading nest when they fell. And right. Yes. <laughs> so that was exciting. <laughs> so, yeah. We're nice. About that. But so, yeah, and this is, this is just how raptor rescue works. And the reason there's a picture of me talking on the phone is because that's what happens first is the phone rings at some odd time when you're usually doing something else <laughs> and you get you know you get the phone call and it says somebody's saying hey there's a bird on the road or somewhere trapped and that bald eagle was trapped in a um in a hydropower plant in some really nasty water and we had to net her out of there to get her out because she couldn't fly for some reason and she did actually survive and get released again but she went to UC Davis also, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. But after about a month of care, she got better. And she did have a high mercury level, but that's something that nobody's really studying that much. Right. I'm going to put in some questions now from our viewers, which is so nice. Let me start with Jackie Porter, and then we go on again. We can jump backwards and forwards. So let's go. Jackie Porter says, what do you find is your biggest roadblocks when trying to curtail this activity? So, so that's... To the previous that's not to this now that it was yeah, for about yeah, logging. yeah yes that's right um, it's because the timber industry is very wealthy and it has a lot of power within the government uh, there's a lot of um it's kind of an incestuous relationship between the agencies and, and and the timber industry so it's very difficult for us to get past them the only choice we really have is to file lawsuits and lawsuits are very expensive and so they don't get filed very often. They should, but they don't. And so, yeah, it's all about not having the money and the power that the industry has. Yeah, I just see a comment here from Tree Climbing. Thank you so much, Tree Climbing, for putting a donation. It says, all Michigan plants is jack pine for warblers, single species habitat, and future fire hazard. That is one. Thank you for being with us here. And and uh, the second comment from tree climbing also thanks for the donation all trees provide edible seeds nuts which is equal to diversity that's a great comment so there we go <laughs> get full support there okay next question here from terry green hi merrily any thoughts on the desalination plant being planned in huntington beach i don't know anything about it but i'm sure you do can i can can it help yeah sorry again Hi, Marilee. Any thoughts on the desalination plant being oh, planned right. in yeah. Huntington Beach? Can it help alleviate drought conditions? Is there pollution uh, associated with desalination? Thank you. A great question. Yeah, I'm not an authority on the desalination mm -hmm. plants, but I have read a little bit about them, and they do have their own level of problems. 
because they, you know, they're taking in a lot of water from the ocean. And so that creates problems for ocean habitat. And then there are, you know, emissions and a certain amount of heat that's generated from them. I, I can't remember everything, but yeah, it's definitely, there, there are no, there, I don't think there are any solutions that are going to be completely okay. I mean, everything that we human beings do has consequences and that's kind of the deal. That's correct, but uh, and, and I completely agree. I mean, I've been doing so much on wind and solar planning and, and, and such things myself as an engineer. Uh, so I completely agree. Even hydro uh, ha has big disadvantages. I think David Han Hancock, uh, uh, eco biologist, already alluded to that. However, we have to make decisions, at least uh, make decisions of what is the least, what has the least impact. As you say, everything has an impact. So I, th I think her point is, is justified because um, I don't know anything about this desalination project, but certainly to, to uh, you, you know, the, it's, it's, it's quite, uh, there's quite a lot of energy involved in separating salt from water. It's nothing very trivial. Um, so I think... I don't know much about the Huntington Beach project, but it probably I would probably believe that it's maybe it's solar driven. It, I don't know what the what the what the source of energy there is, but uh, maybe Terry, you can uh, you know I, it's 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 something worthwhile talking uh, on another uh, maybe another time on it. So broad cat mama of two, hi Merrily. How many animals are killed each year due to deforestation? That's a heavy question. How many are how many animals? are killed per year due to deforestation? Oh, you know, worldwide, I have no idea, and I don't even know locally. It's, you know, that's another funny thing about the whole regulatory system is they don't do any kind of monitoring. What happened in our area is that they started doing all this clear cutting without ever doing any population counts of animals or plants or anything, doing any kind of water monitoring. They didn't set any what are called baselines to see what it was like before they started changing it so radically. So now the only the only information basically about Battle Creek that we have is the information that we as public citizens have collected ourselves because the agencies aren't collecting anything. That's another big loophole in the system is that, you know, you can't prove that anything's going wrong if nobody's collecting any kind of data or scientific, you know, things to tell what's happening. You know, and that's uh, that's a very valid comment. You know, I, I, I'm just thinking of what David Hancock's comment to this as an eagle biologist was because uh, it's it's so complex because uh, animals can also migrate to other areas and so on. So it's very difficult to do even the counting. I mean, you can you can right. you yeah, can. And, you know, I've studied wildlife biology a little bit, and right. even with that, you know, when you do the population counts the way. You're Oops. Oops, now, now she's disappeared. What has happened now? <laughs> we suddenly lost her. Oh, my goodness. Now we lost her. One sec. I'm going to try. Um, ah, dear. What is going on? This is, hang on. I'm just going to put myself in again. This is not, this is not our, our big day today, right? So um, let me just see the, if they sent a message. I just lost them. Oh, dear. <laughs> What a, what a pity. I, you know, I, I really apologize, but I don't know what to say. Um, this is like Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, I really appreciate you hanging on. Uh, you know, if, we, if, this, um, if this doesn't work out today, I think what we're going to do is we're going to repeat it maybe in two, three months time because it's such a great topic. And uh, yeah, and we're just, we're just going to try again. So I really apologize. Uh, I will definitely get down to the technical um, issue I have, uh, so I'm not going to bore you with this. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, anyway, I will. Um, this, the slides that uh, Marily was showing is obviously she's she's very dedicated to wildlife, as you can see. Uh, Kit will be very happy to hear. I was wondering if Kit actually knows Marily because of the uh, you know the Reading Eagle story. Um, so you got a few other interesting. Thank you again, tree climbing, putting even more donations in. What about all the imported tree pests? Oh, you know, tree climbing. You have a lot of good questions. Um, the, yeah, the the what, what's that? The the boars, weevils, and diseases. Yes, you're right. So that's something we should bring up. I don't know if I if we can reconnect with um, with Merrily and whether we should reconnect simply because. I think what I'm going to do is try and resolve this. 
uh, and make sure it doesn't happen next time. Um, I do think that the source is unfortunately, um, uh, the internet went down in, in, in our region, which it shouldn't because I'm connected to optical fibers. So I think that's the root cause. So <laughs> nothing I can do about that. Just ring my phone company's neck. I can't wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bash them. I'm so furious because really, you know, I, you just have to know we put so much effort into, uh, you know, into and so much dedication in getting this right for you. And it just upsets me when these things happen. <laughs> okay, so maybe, you know what? I think we're going to call it a day. Um, again, my apologies for that. And um, we're going to, I think we're going to restream this on another date. Uh, it's a great topic. Yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, um, Jackie, too. So, Nicole, please save the questions, okay? Please save the questions. And thanks to my team. I'm just going to uh, just quickly show my team here. I'm getting all kinds of messages here. One second. From everywhere. Okay, there we go. Um, so great show. Thank you, Tree Climb. You're very, you're very kind. And we'll do a lot more on that. There's a lot to be said about this topic. So uh, let me just shrink and put uh, my wonderful team in here. So I would like to thank my wonderful team here, uh, especially in this case, of course, Nicole, who's put in the effort for making this incredible contact here with the Merrily, uh, Susie, Jani, and Kevin. And, uh, you know, on that note, uh, I wish you a wonderful weekend. And we will be back again, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort this out and make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, it's just the way life is, right? I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> well, things happen, right? Things happen and, and um, <laughs> I can only laugh because that's the only way you have to keep with keep humor when things go wrong, okay? It's been, been I must say though, technically running, it's been quite good, right? It's been quite good. And uh, next week we'll be back again. We've got lots of great shows. So thanks for, thanks for being with us. We'll be back. Uh, trees and climate, uh, climate change is a, is a big topic. It's something we should all care about, especially for our future generations. So that it's just technology, Sherry, isn't it? Uh, tree Climbing says thank you so much and thanks for being there. And uh, Tree Climbing, if you ever want to be on the show, you're very welcome. Uh, send a note to Nicole or to us, to, to, to us. And, uh, you know, uh, let's, uh, let's make sure it goes better. Now the internet is just flowing away. So I really don't know what has happened today. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a good sense of humor and forgive me. And do give us thumbs up despite the technical glitches. Uh, again, my apologies. Uh, and, and, and really, we, we love doing this show. We really love having you. And, you know, it will continue. I've got lots of good things coming up in the future. Okay. So let me just go to my, my all my monitors. I, I, I've got so many monitors open after all the disaster I've had here today and try and see if I can actually, <clears throat> yes, I can actually complete the show. So again, thank you so much for, for, for being there. And do leave some comments uh, and, 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 and forgive the technical glitches. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. See you next weekend.